How about I do it real quick? We'll roll through it real quick. All right, so <clears throat> I think we finished up on – I think I just started going over this when the bell was ringing. Law of continuity. Okay. So this is real simple and basic. I mean, it's just uh, these lines that are coming together, we don't think about that intersection point. We just think about a continuation of these lines. Even though that we know they intersect, even though technically these lines should stop, uh, the, these lines continue on and uh, continue in emotion. Right. That's really all what the uh, law of continuity is. Right. So like I mentioned, we, we think that they should break apart, that they should stop at the intersection. But uh, in our mind, we know that they continue on in a uh, in one motion. So law of common fate. It's all principle that we tend to group similar objects together that share a common motion or destination. What is it, a gaggle of geese, right? A gaggle of geese, I think that's what they call it. A herd of cows? Camels, is that right? A herd of cows? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, we, we, we tend to group animals together. If they're going in a certain direction, common destination, you name it. The band one direction. I just kidding. You like that? No? I thought it was funny. Kayla's laughing. I, I can see her. I can see her. Uh, but anyway, we know animals move in packs. What is it? A lion's pride. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Lion's pride. What else? A gaggle of geese cracks me up. I like that. All right, so law of common fate. All right, last one here. <clears throat> last one. So law of pragmatism is really just how we organize everything in its simplest form. Okay, simplest grouping. And uh, there could be many instances of that, obviously, with a triangle. Those three lines that come together, we can understand that as a triangle. A rectangle, a square, a circle, right? We already understand what those figures are. Okay, it's just not, you know, we don't break it apart. Oh, yeah, there's four lines that come together, all having equal height, length, distance, right, whatever it might be. We all know it as a shape, right, a square. But anyway, what's wrong with this image? I like this here. Read through it real quick. What do you think? Camel, what does it say? Bird in the bush. Oh, okay, you caught it. You caught it. So when you're reading, I mean, there's certain examples of that. I guess you say illusions or whatever, or tricks. Whenever you're reading through something like that, we oftentimes skip over the the second the, and uh, we don't really perceive it as a bird in the bush. We just continue it on and keep moving through it. And uh, those are pretty cool let's say, tricks or games perception where we just kind of skip over that the, and we know it's not supposed to be there. We understand that this should be a statement. And uh, we just kind of skip over that incorrection. All right, so real quick, let's go over the assignment from yesterday. I think there's only three questions, so it shouldn't take too long. Like I said, I want to get to the sensation box. I'll bring this up right now. Crosswork. There it is. Yeah, there's Thursday. Good. Seeing is believe. All right. Why did some images seem confusing to Kenji? 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 I mean, Kenji. What do we have? Campbell, what do you have? Yeah. Good job. Good job. So, um, obviously, for someone that was born and only understood one form of environment his whole life, out in the middle of the woods, really, or out in the middle of a remote location, okay? Bringing him to a city could obviously just cause him to really just be shocked of, uh, you know, obviously the architecture, the fast pace of life, right? I know whenever I travel to Philadelphia, I'm always, you know, really white knuckling it on the highway to make sure I'm not getting in anybody's path. It seems like everybody's so angry driving, doesn't it? 
oh man, I always feel like I'm always, I'm like a stone in a way. Everybody's zooming by me. Like, oh, what are you doing? Why are you stopping on road? It's like, oh, geez, I'm not used to this. Okay, it's just a total shift and change in life. And for a person, especially like Kenji, where is he from? Do you guys remember? Where is he from? To be honest, I can't remember right now. I can't remember. Do you remember, Cam? No? Yeah, it was an African tribe, some someplace in Africa. And uh, obviously, this was a huge shock for him whenever he would maybe, someone like that, moving to an area, let's say New York City or Philadelphia or a large urban area. Okay, I couldn't imagine his experience, right? What was going through his mind. And like I said, I'm I'm used to some fast paced things around here, but man, on days I go to Philadelphia, Harrisburg even, I kind of freeze up when I'm on the highway or going through red lights and and, and Higgins and Valley View especially there's no red lights. But, all right. Two, according to the Turnbull, how do we learn size constancy? What do we have here? Consistency. What do we have? Kill? Yeah, yeah, good job, good job. Okay, so how we you know, learn from around us or observations or interactions with certain stimulus, right? And uh, really just that nature versus nurture. Okay, how we learn certain cues, and social cues especially, uh, norms, morals, all the above, I mean, really. And just our perception of the world around us. All right, three, do you think that Kenji could adjust to life in your own city or town? Explain the difficulties he might encounter. What do you think, Campbell? Um, I say yes, but it took him a long time. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he probably would be, he get used to some things after a short bit of time. But at first, holy cow, I couldn't imagine. And uh, I think they described it where he was living, uh, the mountains, right? Did they say that within... That reading, the mountains, he, he thought they were so small, right? He's like, oh, yeah, the mountains in the far distance, they're, you know, really small. And then they brought him up to the mountain. Like, oh, my gosh, I could have never, you know, they never perceived it as being that large. Uh, it, it, just in his vision, he saw it in the distance, and he thought the mountain was just really small. And obviously, just because of his depth perception, he was thrown off. Can you imagine taking him across the street or something? Like, let's say you're parked at, across from Cuppies, you're walking across, can you imagine him seeing a truck and his depth perception? Oh, it's really small. It's fine. We're good. <laughs> it gets closer and closer to him. He'd probably jump up in the air. What is going on? What is going on? Yeah, it's just amazing to me that these people, uh, different cultures and how they perceive with, uh, like gestalt psychology and illusions, you know, how they're perceived differently. And it just goes to show that we do learn in these things, uh, that we, we pick up on it through experience. And it's just not an inherent trait, an inherent understanding or perception. All right. So real quick, here's a bell ringer. Make sure we have five of them. And I'll give everybody credit in here. No problems. Those of you at home, you got to turn it in, though. So they're not getting away with it. We just went over the reading and finished up Gestalt Psychology. All right, Sarah? No, no worries. And we're just doing a bell ringer now. Describe how people from cultures all around the world might perceive things differently. There you go. Give me a few minutes and we'll start our sensation box. Oh, I grabbed the wrong binder. Oh my gosh. That's okay. You're just worried about these pizzas here. I know, I really am. Tell you what, Pendal won't like that, huh? Huh? <laughs> I was joking. Well, I mean, we did order two more. Like six of us in the class. Whoa. I know where the leftovers can go. Usually we have only to pile three slices down, but we don't know Ooh. Give you everything in my wallet for whatever's left over. Huh? I'll give you everything in my wallet for whatever's left over. How much is in your wallet? <laughs> Actually, I don't know. It's down Maybe in the locker room. Might be. I, had, have, I have three dollars. No, no, I'm good. I have. I I have a sandwich from Pillow Hotel. I went there yesterday. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, you like it there. I like their steaks. 
try their steaks yet. I always get the pillow burger. It's awesome. The bread that. Oh yeah. Their bread, that, uh, yeah. bread is good. I like the bread that they use for the burgers. All right. Those of you at home, please submit the bell ringers in here. You guys are good, no problem. Again, exam will be Tuesday. So Monday we'll have a review, and uh, Tuesday we'll have the exam. All right, so what do we have here? I want to get the sensation boxes. Describe how people from cultures all around the world might perceive things differently. What do we have? Yeah. Sarah, what do you think? I said that people perceive, I guess, light through a lens that suits their environment and their goals. So, like, if you, like, I, I don't know if this is like Kenji. Or Kenji, yeah, from the reading. Like, how he lived in the, in the forest, he didn't really go beyond that. He didn't. Things, we were talking about the mountain, yeah. Like that kind of stuff, though. Like obviously, to suit his lifestyle and his culture, those are things he would really have to confront so he perceives things differently than we would. Awesome, right? Awesome. The only way he experiences that is through experience, right? And uh, it's not an inherent trait. It's not with his perception of far sighted, near sighted things. And um, we're just talking about. How he would react if we would walk across the street, you know, you know, Cuppies is a busy intersection there. He'd probably see a dump truck coming. Like, oh, it's small, soft in distance, and eh, whatever. It's really, it's, it's really little. And then once it keeps coming, approaches depth perception, because he never really experienced anything like that, and obviously change a bit. And uh, yeah, yeah. So good, good job, good job. So the cultures all around the world, depending on what you're presented, what you experience every single day, could be totally different. And I mentioned that yesterday with the illusions and, you know, and obviously uh, architecture and how we form shapes depending on these principles of gestalt psychology, which we don't even really think about and just kind of happen and how we can conform things together with grouping and uh, just understand certain, certain, I guess you say lines and shapes. All right. Good, good, good. All right. Moving on here. Let's get to the sensation boxes. Fun Friday. That's enough for today about this stuff. We're done. 